data. And just to reiterate, uh, the consumer price numbers for the month of May uh, came in higher than what Bay Street was looking for. We saw the overall CPI rise to 2.9% in the month compared to a year ago, and that's up from 2.7% a month earlier. Now, the primary factor there, higher prices for services, but it breaks a four-month string of easing price pressures since the start of the year, and a reacceleration both in the headline and the core inflation could caution the Bank of Canada against the second consecutive interest rate cut next month. Remember, the Bank of Canada recently cut rates for the first time in four years as uh, policymakers might want to try to determine if this inflation setback is just a temporary one. Robert Kafsik covers the economy as a senior economist at BMO Capital Markets and joins us with his reaction to the inflation numbers. Robert, good morning. What do you think? Well, uh, good morning. So I, I think our view all along here has been been that um, the Bank of Canada is looking at some very positive inflation numbers the last three or four months. And unless something really goes wrong to suggest that that momentum is stalling out or, or turning the other way, that we could be setting up for a, for a July rate cut. Um, unfortunately, it looks like just scanning across these numbers that something kind of did go wrong uh, in May and some of those core inflation measures uh, did start to reaccelerate again. So I, you know, I, I suspect as the market reaction plays out here over the next little while that I think the odds of that July rate cut are going to get scaled back pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Okay. And in terms of what is driving the inflation story, I mean, we mentioned higher prices for services were one of the considerations. When I look at things like what's happening at the grocery store, looks like food inflation rose 2.4%. That seems manageable. Uh, grocery prices increased 1.5% from a year ago. So for those who are frustrated by inflation at the grocery store, that too seems somewhat manageable. And there is, of course, the irony in a higher interest rate environment of housing-related costs, specifically mortgage interest costs and rent. Those still remain the biggest contributors to the annual change in the rate of inflation. Maybe we have to look through that a little bit. But when, you, when you're trying to assess what part of the inflation story is the trickiest or the stickiest, what do you see? Well, you, you covered a few of the key areas. Grocery inflation is cooling down, and we can see price trends at the producer level slowing down. So I suspect that's going to continue. Um, goods inflation more broadly is, is pretty subdued. This, this really, at the end of the day, comes back to the consistent story we've been we've been telling for a while and that is this is a housing and shelter story and more broadly a services story so uh, you mentioned rents rents are obviously very sticky that's something that's kind of outside the scope of, of Bank of Canada policy. That's more of a demographic and uh, immigration and supply side story. Um, service inflation more broadly is is where we've seen more stubbornness. That's, that's typically more driven by things like wage pressure. And we do see consistent wage growth um, uh, across various measures in the Canadian economy. So that's kind of where we're stuck. Um, I, you know, when you, when you step back and look at the last four or five months in total, we're still looking at you know core measures in the 1.8 to 2.9 percent range so we don't see any three handles on a year-over-year -year basis uh so we you know we're not we're not seriously deteriorating we're not too far off where the bank of canada wants to see it but i, I suspect that this particular number is going to say okay maybe maybe from a risk management perspective we have to we have to cool our jets a little bit now, I want to show our audience what's happening with the Canadian dollar this morning. As we got this data, we did see a push higher in the Canadian currency versus the U.S. currency. The idea of stronger currencies usually signals that interest rates are going to be higher. And just to reiterate for our audience, we recently saw the Bank of Canada uh, move ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve by cutting interest rates for the first time in four years by 25 basis points. The um, uh, weakness in the Canadian dollar is um, uh, based in part on that idea that rates might be coming down, especially versus the United States. It uh, looks like in uh, the trader markets this morning, uh, the expectations of a rate cut in July have come down a little bit um, after this latest CPI print. But I'll remind our audience that uh, the economists polled by Bloomberg were anticipating that the Bank of Canada uh, at least they would not have been surprised if the Bank of Canada ultimately were to stay on hold in the July meeting and maybe get back to rate cuts in September. I believe this is the first of two inflation prints that we'll be watching before that late July Bank of uh, Canada decision. What are you going to be watching between now and then? 
Well, the next CPI report is critical, of course. So one bad inflation report after four, and let's call them what they are, they were very positive inflation reports, is not necessarily enough to really change the playbook completely here, right? But if we see two in a row, then that starts to become less of a coincidence and maybe more of a trend, and that would be more concerning. So, so you know, if the market's pricing about 50-50 odds of a July rate cut now, which which would be scaled back a little bit from where it was 10 or 15 minutes ago, that that seems reasonable because another good inflation print would make it basically five of six heading into that meeting. So that would be, um, you know, that would be good news. The other thing I would keep an eye on here is the business outlook survey. Uh, that's going to come ahead of the next policy decision as well. And the Bank of Canada places a lot of importance on that. Um, not, not, not just the measured inflation numbers that we're looking at here, but feedback from the business community on where inflation expectations are. And there's there's a lot of importance placed on that, just given that um, the Bank of Canada is leaning pretty hard against inflationary psychology out there in the economy. And from a risk perspective, the one thing they don't want to do is ease too much too soon and then have those inflation expectations kind of root themselves into re-accelerating re -accelerating inflation later this year and through 2025. So if the business outlook survey follows this up and it, it looks... Uh, dovish or it looks favorable from their perspective, that might be a, another key piece of info that they that they look at going into July. For those who are just joining us, inflation unexpectedly surged in Canada less than three weeks after the central bank here uh, led the G7 in cutting interest rates. Uh, and so this is a potential setback for the Bank of Canada now that they have embarked on this policy pivot. Robert Kafsik joining us from BMO. And Robert, just to build on your last point, the governor of the Bank of uh, Canada Tiff Macklin was speaking yesterday and he reiterated uh, that while it is reasonable to expect more policy reductions if the price pressure story improves, uh, that the policymakers don't want to move too quickly if that's going to jeopardize progress on inflation. So it sounds like you're thinking of it holistically as well. For people who are trying to figure out where interest rate uh, might be, let's say, at this time next year. Uh, how are you sort of thinking about the, the path of interest rates between now and, and, and call it early 2025? Yeah, so, so we've had a really long-standing view that the tightening cycle was going to start later than most expected, and it was going to be probably more gradual than, if not most expected, certainly more gradual than in cycles past because typically an easing cycle coincides with recession we're not seeing that now and, and and the pace of easing tends to be very abrupt and very quick so this has a much different character to it um where we're coming out of a multi-year inflation battle and 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 as we said from a risk perspective central banks do not want to have to go through this again next year and and i think there's been a feeling for a while that if they're going to miss this in one direction, they're going to miss it in the direction of leaving rates a little bit too high for, for a little bit too long. And, and let's be honest, rates are, are restrictive now. We are seeing signs that the economy is 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 really grinding at a pretty slow rate. It's certainly a sub-potential rate um, in, in Canada for, for about a year now. Uh, and so that's the environment we're in. So I mean, to your question specifically, we've had a long view that that June and September would be uh, rate cuts for the Bank of Canada as well as December, and then we'd probably get about 75 basis points of easing through 2025. So there certainly is scope for rates to fall further by this time next year. I just continue to have this this hunch that the path is going to be kind of uh, kind of uh, s slow and relatively moderate, and ultimately, importantly as well, leaving rates at a higher level than than Canadians were used to in the past.